Okay, this evening I'm going to do a tutorial on Rhino, and basically it's using it to uh, creating a table. So I'm going to click my box tool here and start with the top, and I'm going to click and just basically drag myself a rectangular shape for the top. And now I clicked again, and now it's asking, you know, kind of how thick I want my table, and I'll just do two inches. So I have a basic table over here. Now if I move, use my right mouse button, you'll see it rotates around like this. If I hold control and my right mouse button, it zooms in and out. If I hold shift and my right mouse button, it moves it around. So, you know, just experiment and get used to it. Now if I render this here like it is, it should come out. There we have a flat block. Or I can do a get this quick render, which lets me kind of roll it around like this. Okay, what I want to do is I want to do a an edge fillet, which is basically smoothing the edge of the corners and everything here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so if you try to do the solid fillet here, I'm going to go ahead and show you here. And I click on here, and I'm selecting the edges. See, it's asking me to select the edges that I want to do this with. And if I hit enter, it's going to tell me error or failure in building fillets. Okay. But the reason is I'm not using a small enough number. So for example, I'm going to go back to fillet edges, choose my edges, and instead of doing a radius of 1, I'm going to do something like 0.25. OK, and I'll hit Enter. And you'll see that I get a nice smooth edge here. And if I rotate it around, it's very smooth. It kind of looks like a countertop. All right, so the next step here. I want to add another kind of a maybe an inlay kind of a shape or I'm going to click the box tool again and choose something right about there and go to the opposite corner so they're just touching again click again and I want to have it just I don't know about half the thickness alright so now if I click that middle piece just kind of free move it with my mouse I want it to just stick up just above that layer so that you see, I don't know if you can really see it here, but there's a little thin line here. That indicates to me that it's just above the surface. The reason I do that is I can give that piece a different texture. For example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a, a gloss finish. Um, oh, I have to choose, let's see, oh, I have to choose my piece, go to basic, color, Let's do like it. I'll do a black glass maybe. And I'm going to choose a high gloss and maybe a little bit of transparency and no texture at all. All right. So I'm going to click off of that and I'll choose this other piece. I'm going to go basic. I'm going to do kind of a high gloss on this too, but maybe not as much. And then for my texture bitmap, I'm going to my wood textures that I kind of gather from the internet. Um, and you can buy CDs full of textures and stuff. I'm just going to pick this one. I don't know how it's going to look yet, but we'll find out. If I click Render, it'll come up in a full color here. So you can see how you've got the, the nice looking table here. And let me go ahead and render this. And um, What I want to do now, obviously, is put some legs on the table. All right, let me close this and get it out of the way. So now the legs, I generally use truncated cones. And I'm going to go out here to my truncated cone, go out here, and I, I kind of try to center mine, you know, along something else in the picture. So I that looks pretty good, and I click, and I choose how wide I want the top of my, uh, and you can see down here that it's how, how wide it is um, at the top. And I'm going to go about there and click, and now I want to know how big I want the bottom. So I'm just going to go down a little bit because I want it to be tapered. And now it wants to know which direction I want to go. And if I hold Shift, it lets me pull out how long I want my leg here. OK, so now I have a basic table leg. And if I render it now, you can see. OK, but I want a little bit more fancy than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on here and I'm going to type in or actually I'll just go to curve and let's see here spiral it wants to know where I want to start my spiral now you see if I was to click right here dead center and now it wants to know how far out I want my spiral 
or this is the end of my axis. So I'm going to click down here at the bottom of my spiral here. And it wants to know how wide of a spiral I want. So I'm going to go about there. And now it wants to know how wide I want the bottom to be. And I'm going to go just about there. So you see, basically, I created this spiral. And it doesn't really do anything. For example, it doesn't look any different. All that spiral is is something that I can guide something along. All right? So I'm going to go back out here. I'm going to choose my spiral. And I'm going to do a pipe. OK? Now I just typed in pipe. But I can choose how big of a pipe I want. For example, I'm going to go down here on the side view, or on the front view, and I'm going to click about there. And on the bottom, it should be just a tiny bit smaller. OK, so now what that did is it obviously created this weird looking pipe on my leg. Now that doesn't look like a table leg. So here's the trick though. If I was to click solid, whoops, solid difference, and it wants to know the first set of poly surfaces, and that means the surface I want to keep. So if I click in here, okay, and I've got just my leg selected, now I can press enter for the second set. So I can click on that weird, you know, tube spiral thing, and I hit enter, it'll take a second. And I can go ahead and delete the curve. But what that gives me, it's a little slow because there's so many curves on there now. I, I think I used my pipe a little bit too big, but you can see how with, you know, <laughs> it gives it kind of a carved look. Um, I would probably do that a little bit less um, next time I did it. Maybe make the pipes a little smaller so that it's a straight leg with just some carved circles in it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go with it. I'll choose a a texture here. Basic. Um, I'm going to go with an actual texture. In fact, maybe I'll just match the one that I used on the other piece. If it's in here. <laughs> I probably passed it. That one. Alright, so now if you try to it, basically what you can do is you can click this and do a copy. However, when you do that, it says this is the evaluation version. So what I realize is that's when you copy something to the clipboard. You can actually type copy and it gives you these options. And I don't want to do it to a clipboard. I just want to do copy. And now it wants to know where do you want to copy it from. And So I can click right here. And where do you want to copy to? And if I hold shift, it locks it in a straight line. And I can drag down here, click. And I can drag down over here and click. OK? So what I now have, if I render it, it may take a moment, is a table with carved legs. And you know, you can go. What I would probably do um, is I would create a sphere, and I would start it here, like that, and let's see if I can select just the sphere. It's a little large for a foot, but, you know, it'll work. And then I'm going to do a copy. And then click it. And I'm going to do basically this so that I have feet on the bottom of my table. OK. And I'll just select these, go to my color, basic, texture, and try to choose that same kind of pretty looking wood that I had. OK, so now I'm going to zoom out just a bit and render. Now you can do a little bit more editing and stuff, but um, that's basically um, doing a full model of a table with a filleted edge. And you know, you can really get into some details and stuff. So I hope you enjoy that.